That's fire, baby. Hi, welcome to Life of the Brand. Tyler McKnight introducing Stephen Pence. Uh, he will be taking over for Kevin Wade here on out, I know. Oh, uh, but not a big deal. He's gonna yeah. come in, he's gonna do exactly what Kevin does, but better. Sorry, yeah. Kev. Uh, so today, we wanna talk about who the next blockbuster will be. And not by blockbuster movies, but actually no. blockbuster rentals. The you company. May, the company. Oh, okay. Not anything with Jennifer Lawrence or Bradley Cooper. Okay. Even though those are blockbusters, great movies, just not today. Um, so we will be talking about that. And there was a reason why I burned that, because that was the the uh, illusion of a death of a brand. And it was really fun, and it hurt my lungs, but I'm glad I did it. Uh, so we just want to talk about today, who's going to be the next blockbuster? Yeah, so this content arms race that's been going on with Netflix, spending about $7 billion in content. Just a lot of dough. This year. Um, and other companies like Hulu, Amazon, HBO. Um, there's a lot of companies out there that are investing in original content and spending a ton of their cash trying to get the audience attention yep. in this like fragmented space that we've got going on. So what do you think? Who do you think is going to be the next blockbuster? As Netflix is already at the top, right? Yeah. So they're, they're pretty safe. Well, why don't we take a step back and actually look at when Netflix took over? Okay. Uh, because for me, I was about 15, 16 when Netflix mm -hmm. came out. Yeah. And I was not an early adapter. I was still, I had a blockbuster right down the street. I used to love to ride my bike there with my yeah, ProTech helmet, mm -hmm. maybe hit some jumps on the way down, uh, and rent my movies. And I had a blockbuster membership, I had my own. It was the greatest thing in the world. I'd rent five, six movies, okay. uh, take them home, watch them, bring them back. Um, then Blockbuster launched its own. Uh, DVD delivery yeah, service, I which that. I adapted to first. I know Netflix was around, mm -hmm. and I finally said, you know what, Netflix has this streaming, which is kind of cool. I can watch movies for free, and, and the right. streaming service was free at the time, so that yeah. you were paying the, the $10.99 or the $11.99 for the DVDs, uh, and this was back in 2007, 2008. A bunch was, of old movies right. in their library. Though. And uh, their, their streaming videos weren't that great. Mm -hmm. There wasn't really nothing to go home about, but at that time, you were still able to watch all your movie channels. You had TiVo, mm -hmm. TiVo was the big thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I didn't really adapt probably until I was in college and it was before they got on to everybody about using their parents' streaming service right. and you know you could have as many people watch on, at one time. So uh, I've been on it for 10 years now probably and I love it and it's still my go-to. Uh, but who do I think is going to be the next blockbuster? Uh, I have a feeling it's going to end up being cable as a whole. Uh -huh. I just yeah. think that that paid subscription service like that is not gonna is not gonna be sustainable and it's not gonna last because nobody wants half the channels they're given. I have to pay 80 bucks a month just to get five channels I want yeah. and then 150 channels I don't care about. So in my opinion, that's what's gonna happen there. Um, I know you have your thoughts on it because we had a huge discussion before yeah. this with some of the office people, um, but what are your thoughts on it? Who do you, th who do you think is gonna be that next blockbuster that's just gonna go out? Yeah, to your point, I think a lot of the TV networks will start to develop their own app, and a lot of them already have. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not really used to dealing with their customers on a one-on-one -on -one level like yep. Netflix is. They've kind of been lumped into cable companies and they've had a bunch of networks in their employ and they're not really used to kind of engaging with their niche customers like Netflix is. Mm -hmm. Netflix is a ton of data, right, on their customers. They release original programming to a wide audience like House of Cards, Narcos, but then they also go and they kind of hit singles and doubles, um, which, yep. which is what I call it, which they're extremely niche content, um, like the Defenders and some of the other Marvel series that are very focused. So yeah, I think Netflix is gonna be good for that, but then the TV companies, they're just not gonna be able to adapt. I think they're gonna get slowly taken out by Netflix, Hulu, HBO, as they continue to grow and steal more of their audience. So, so what do you think that's gonna do to advertising? I, I know that right now you got HBO, Netflix, they don't offer advertising. No. Now, maybe they will in the future, but with these subscription sales that they have, there really is no need for advertising. And no. um, I think advertising is gonna to move to content publishers. I think it's all gonna be, done through web pages and, and, and videos, short little videos. People aren't gonna wanna see uh, advertising content on subscription services that they already pay for. So, uh, you know, there is a time frame for this and I just wanna know what your opinion is on that time frame. When do you think this will happen? Do you think it's gonna happen soon? Yeah. Do you think there's gonna be people that don't wanna to adapt to it? Do you think it's gonna really cause advertising dollars to, to go down or are they gonna boom? Well, I think probably in the next five years we'll see a significant change. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think I've, I was looking at this article the, the other day that showed that millennials about 25 to 40, they're watching less TV than ever. They're using... Which is not, yeah. Yeah, streaming services and stuff like that. So these cable companies will continue to die slow, a slow death. Um, they're hanging on right now, and they still have some good programming, mm-hmm. but um, the, the companies that are going to win are companies like Netflix that... You know they're spending seven billion, five billion right now on the front end, and right. and that's not doing anything for their cash flow. They actually have negative cash flow because of that. But in the long run, they're probably going to have negative cash flow for a long time. But eventually, I think they're going to win out. Right. Um, so I think about five years. That's my guess that things will be significantly different than they are. You know, and here's another thing we were talking about before we sat down and got in front of the camera and talked to all you guys. Uh, we we were trying to figure out. What happened to Blockbuster? Did did they not have the resources available to to adapt, mm-hmm. or were they resistant to adapting? And then when they tried to adapt, they did it too late. And yeah. Thus, you know, they have that. There's a Twitter account that's dedicated to the last Blockbuster ever, and it's actually pretty hilarious. We'll put the yeah. the, the handle on here so you can go look at the tweets. They're they're great. But uh, that company fell through. They had great equity to their name, but mm-hmm. they just. Yeah, I don't think they switched in time, to be honest. I remember when they started releasing those. They had those kiosks. They were trying to compete with Redbox Mm -hmm. as well. But it was a little too late because they just, I mean, obviously they're gone now. But Mm -hmm. um, Netflix had its teeth sunk into that and Redbox. And it kind of just slowly killed Blockbuster. And no one wanted to go to the store, wait in line, have to deal with membership fees. Remember the days of late fees and stuff like that? Um, Brutal. It to your card and stuff like that. You had to carry around a little lemon. Not my in card, card, my dad's card. Yeah. Thanks, Pop. <laughs> yeah. I actually had one of my own, so. I did um, too, but they spelled my name wrong, so it didn't go on my ID. <laughs> but anyways, continue. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and anyways, so Redbox and stuff like that have revolutionized DVD rentals. Uh-huh. And Netflix, now you can do it in any part of your home and other companies like that. So, yeah, I think Blockbuster just didn't adapt with the times. And similarly, other companies that are kind of copying Netflix, Netflix was, Netflix was sort of the first company to invest heavily in original mm-hmm. content. And now you see other companies following suit. And they're actually winning a lot of awards. Hulu won some Emmy Awards just a few weeks ago. Right. Um, so they're following suit, but does that mean they can hold up for a long time? Usually the ones that copy, maybe they won't, maybe they will. Right. Only time will tell. But Netflix is still the only one that's investing the most amount of money, more than HBO, more than network television, more than Amazon, which is a huge corporate giant. Mm-hmm. So. As, as of right now, I think Netflix is going to remain at the top and probably kill a lot of entertainment companies. And, and it's probably going to do what television did. All these uh, cable companies, dish companies, they all integrated another company. They mm-hmm. bought one out. So I think you could see that happening where you know, Amazon will find that it's not really sustainable to have a production company and then try to manage their e-commerce site and mm-hmm. Whole Foods at the same time. Yeah. I know they have a lot of money to back it up and try it, but... You know, and then you got guys like Facebook who are trying to, oh, yeah. to integrate in the near future their own original content, where they can sell to two billion do- two billion sorry not dollars two billion people. That is their that is their population of viewers mm-hmm. on their site, and so they seem to think they can create content and sell ad space there. I don't think that's going to be s- sustainable. They're I-, I think they're more likely to become the next Google mm-hmm. or something along those lines. Uh, shout out to Brian Wink for using his favorite catchphrase. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's. Um, it's really interesting to see, and I think the ones that will really prevail are going to be Netflix, Hulu, and the ones that have been ingrained in original content since I don't want to say day one, but that's they were the early adapters of it, and they're mm-hmm. going to pay, you know, they're going to go for it. Now it could be something like Apple, where Apple's kind of losing the arms race when it comes to mm-hmm. devices right now, when they were the ones that revolutionized the smartphone. Uh, you know, now everybody's just making fun of their iPhone 10 as the knockoff to Samsung's Galaxy Note. So. Mm-hmm. You know, th- there's a lot of parallels in other industries that we can draw here, and I don't want to make assumptions, but in my opinion, I think Hulu and Netflix will, will be the long-lasting ones, and HBO can sprinkle itself in there. But to, to touch on your point of the apps, I think that's probably where it's going to go, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't think about it until somebody brought it up in the office, but why not just, just sell apps and people can pay $2 per month just to get a specific app? Because in reality, how many of us actually watch more than 10 channels on our DirecTV or right. on our... So that, that, that could be where it goes, um, but... I think that's all we got for you guys today. I'm, I'm glad to introduce you to Steven. He'll be coming around a lot more. Um, and I just want to leave you with one funny quote, or tweet, should I say, from the last Blockbuster. And it's at Lone Blockbuster. Are you a movie buff? Are you looking for a summer internship? Do you fit into crawl spaces? Apply in store today. So they're <laughs> looking for people to, to crawl into spaces, I guess. Yeah. Or maybe they're going into plumbing. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that Twitter account's entertaining. Um, but it's very entertaining. It actually just got revitalized. It's got 261 
261,000 followers. Yeah. Which is pretty impressive. That's more than uh, the amount of people that have stock in Blockbuster, which you can buy for one cent. Yeah. And we'll leave you on that. If you want to invest, go buy it for one cent. Yeah. See you later. <laughs>